Oh, oh man. What's up, guys? It's Wabacha, and I wanted to talk to you today about Shockwave Totem in patch 2.3. Fun fact, I just did this whole spiel in preview mode on my OBS. So I have to start over. Hooray! Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the what I consider the four possible versions for Shockwave Totem in patch 2.3. The four versions of Shockwave Totem in 2.3 are the two original ones, which you can still see build guides on my on my YouTube channel, which would be the Assassin and the Inquisitor. First off, the Assassin. The Assassin is going to be the same in the passive tree, except for the Ascendancy passives are a little, little different. We no longer have Toxic Delivery in the same place as it was before. Now, toxic Delivery is now the fourth point in that branch on the Ascendancy passives. We don't really get the benefit from Noxious Strikes because it says, you know, chance to cause bleeding on hit with attacks. Shockwave Totem is not an attack. So what this does mean is that you're going to be getting Deadly Infusion, and when you get your eighth Ascendancy passive through the Endgame Labyrinth, you're going to be going Assassinate, um, which really this just means you could drop some crit passives on your tree. Uh, you're going to deal you know more damage against enemies that are on low life. You're going to have more crit when dan enemies are on low life, and you're going to have crit or you're going to have Coling Strike when they're on or when you're critting. So this is actually pretty good for boss killing. This is just this is going to speed up boss killing that much more uh, because you're going to be critting a lot. So assassin passive tree is the same. Ascendancy passives at end game once you have eight passive points, you're going to be going deadly fusion first and assassinate second. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to inquisitor. Now inquisitor is inquisitor is actually completely the same uh passive tree is the same you're going to be getting inevitable judgment before you would you know have to choose between instruments of virtue or augury of penitence i myself would current usually lean towards instruments of virtue but now with eight ascendancy passives you could actually get both i would suggest getting instruments of virtue first because augury of penitence i think it's much better defensively than it is offensively because often you're going to be out of range of the mobs to for them to be affected by augury of penitence but the big threats in the game that you know such as volatiles those things are always going to be in your face therefore they're going to be dealing less elemental damage when they do explode in your face uh, you should avoid those at all costs for the record but augury of penitence is some what i would grab as your eighth point the other ascendancy though you know before i start this if you've been doing this you know leave a comment in the comments below you know tell me what you think of it uh you know hopefully someone has because i see the potential in this too um and it's it's hierophant um actually with the changes to sanctuary of thought now giving you 50 percent reduced mana cost of all your skills and then more reduced mana cost of your skills when you're a full energy shield i wouldn't necessarily count on that just saying you could actually go uh hierophant shockwave totem with six passive point or with six ascendancies going pursuit of faith sanctuary of thought and ancestral bond and this won't be as offensive as either the assassin or the inquisitor but one of the things i actually don't really like about shockwave totem anymore is the awkwardness and the clunkiness of using a mana pot because in most Shockwave Totem builds, you have about 300 mana, 300, 300 to 400 mana left over. And Shockwave Totem itself, fully linked and linked appropriately, is going to be in that you know 110 to 160 mana range. Uh, especially when you slap it in power on there, etc., etc., etc. So realistically, you could only cast two to three Shockwave Totems on mana. But with Sanctuary of Thought, this changes substantially. Because all of a sudden, you're, you have a much more affordable... Uh, totem skill that you're going to be using you could pop you could most likely use this on mana without a mana pot and this just really aids the playability and again what this does eventually lead to is if you ever are mana or in the position to get your end game labyrinth and your eight ascendancy passives you can go ritual of awakening what this means is you could drop ancestral bond and you could play a triple crit shockwave totem build with just sanctuary of thought ritual of awakening those last those points that you save from no longer having to spec in ancestral bond you could 
get more crit, you could get some mana regen, you could possibly get more life, you could do a lot of things with it. And I just, and it's pretty cool um, to do this in my opinion. And, and real quickly, I wanna to touch on Pursuit of Faith. Pursuit of Faith is a very, very interesting ascendancy passive because it has some unique interactions with things such as uh, Mantra of Flames and anything else that gives you buffs in a, or a buff per, or a, yeah, like damage per buffs, which is Mantra of Flames. And while Pursuit of Faith is fantastic when you're like clearing fast and you're going through a map and you're, you're speed clearing that gorge and two and a half minutes or whatever with your triple totems when you get to a boss it's going to lose some of its effectiveness because if the boss doesn't have ads you're going to lose all of your pursuit of faith stacks and if it does have ads it's not going to have as many ads as stacks as you could get on pursuit of faith i've seen pursuit of faith get up to like 70 before maybe maybe that's lying but i've definitely seen it get up to like 50 to 60 stacks and that's that's a lot of increased damage that you get. So Pursuit of Faith is great while clearing, but not so great when you get to bosses generally. But still, if you've played this Hierophant, uh, you know, Shockwave Totem build, let me know, because I think it's actually pretty interesting and there's a lot of possibilities into it. It could actually be a pretty like budget-friendly beginner Shockwave, to, uh, Shockwave Totem build if you use uh, Illuminated Devotion, you know, which gives your helm 20% LE resist penetration, 20% increased area of effect on your gloves and leech on your boots. That doesn't really matter. But yeah, Hierophant, Sanctuary of Thought, Ritual of Awakening eventually. And I think this could actually be a pretty fun Shockwave Totem build. As I said, not as offensive as Assassin or Inquisitor, but could potentially be much more playable, especially with all the totem speed and all this other stuff you get in Hierophant. So the last one that I'm going to be talking about is a, a new version of Shockwave Totem, which has been cropping up. It You could go check it out on twitch.tv uh, slash Gaming. So shout out to Carr because when he, he, I saw this on his stream and he so bravely titled his stream, changing the Shockwave Totem meta. I don't really think it changes the meta that much because I think there are a lot of difficulties in this. I really, I'm hoping that he makes a build guide on it eventually, but uh, it is a, and I'm just going to tell you, what it uses and i'll explain afterwards it is a, a ci zealot's oath poison based shockwave totem build and it uses the new unique beast for shawl and it uses southbound soldier gloves and what happens is you go and oh and it's elementalist it's an elementalist ci zealot's oath poison based shockwave totem build there's a lot of things that contradict itself in this build uh, you know, you're like, oh, well, <laughs> elementalist poison, what, you know, that, that, that seems a little weird. And, you know, you might look, you might look at the ascendancy passives in elementalist and think this doesn't really benefit shockwave totem too much. And me and carve on the record, there's a video in the past have both said before that it's not that good for shockwave totem because we already run hatred so that gives a shattering conflict just gives you chill so shattering is immensely better than chill defensively and then we we run physical lightning too so we get shocking automatically and and so like i said we've both kind of stated our thoughts on it before but what has changed is in in the other reason and <laughs> one last thing and because of Carcass Jack. I'm just going to put that out there. Because of Carcass Jack. Because Carcass Jack was pretty much like the go-to chest for Shockwave Totem. Carcass Jack is not a terribly good CI chest. Because you, you really want a CI chest to carry a lot of ES on it. Because, you know, especially if you're using one piece that isn't, you know, ES base, i.e. southbound soldier gloves. You're going to not have a lot of ES as a CI build. And that's, that's a little rough. So... We've both discredited Elementalist before. Uh, we have both been on the fence about Zealot's Oath for a very long time. Shout out to Hegemony for always liking Zealot's Oath. And, and then Poison was kind of just like, eh, but why? Like, why would you go Poison? Well, now, um, as, as I said, Elementalist does not really lend itself to a traditional Shockwave Totem build. But 
And you no longer get shattering. The way, way he's playing it now, he no longer runs hatred. Because if he ran hatred, his southbound soldier gloves will not work the way that he wants them to. And the way he wants southbound soldier gloves to work is essentially the way I high highlighted in that automated power charge generation video where I talked about not running hatred, letting mobs die from ignite, or it works with poison too, hence this being a poison build, but he could automatically generate his power charges, which is a thing to, you know, it says, a, or it helps its playability a lot. But now you go elementalist, you grab, uh, you get conflux, I forgot what it's called, but you get conflux. And this makes it to where uh, you shock, chill, and ignite. Your shock and ignite, well, all of it's based off of your total physical damage, and you're going full physical damage with this build. So it's actually going to be more consistent than the previous variants using physical to lightning because you're potentially going to be dealing out a lot more physical damage. And physical damage is a much better uh, method to deliver damage because you don't have to worry about elemental equilibrium when you're uh, when you deal nothing but physical damage. You don't have to worry about a mob having blessing of elements. You don't have to worry about sixty percent lightning resist on the map, etc., etc., etc. You know, you don't have to worry about the bosses that have you know resist elemental, resist lightning, blah 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 blah. So it's going to be a much a more consistent and a stronger delivery method for shocking. But it does suck that you no longer shatter because shatter was such a big defensive part of shockwave totem. But now the shock, the defensive part is instead shifting from the shattering of mobs, you know, at about seven to eight k effective HP, to no longer worrying about the shatter. So you have to worry about DD and porcupines. But now instead of seven to eight k HP, you have ten k plus with CI, which is pretty easy to get consistently with CI. CI, you get a lot of effective HP. And the other thing this does is, since you're Elementalist, you get Leech of the Primordial. Leech of the Primordial gives you double benefit from your Golems and gives you one additional Golem. I have said this before, but I think, and, I, and I'm going to say it now, but <laughs> clearly I'm saying it now. Get rid of shit like that in your videos if you do that. But it gives you double benefit from your Golems, so you run Stone Golem, and you could run a lightning golem. So this means you're getting, you know, a nice chunk of cast speed and you're getting flat life regen, which is turned into energy shield via Zealot's Oath. And you also still, you still get a little bit of uh, percent life regen on the tree via sanctity and growth and decay if, if you want it. And you also get the life regen from using things like Enduring Cry, etc., 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 which if you don't use Enduring Cry, and you just start going without Endurance Charges, I suggest you do that because Enduring Cry is amazing, especially when it's giving you a lot of regen. And this turns into a, from Carve's own mouth, the Shockwave Totem with the most survivability that he's ever experienced. And I believe it because CI is so good defensively. You don't have to worry about poison damage, don't have to worry about chaos, blah, 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 blah. You have a high effective HP pool. It's, it's good. So you're using Zealot's Oath to turn in the regen from Enduring Cry, Percent Base, and Stone Golem into Energy Shield regen. And you are getting uh, Shocking based fully off of your physical damage. And the thing is, you need Southbound Soldier Gloves to work because you only get Conflux with mobs that you kill. So you go full physical and you slap a Poison Gem on with Southbound Soldier Gloves they won't die to the hit from the totem, but they'll die from the poison, which then counts as your kill, giving you elemental conflux. It's a great combination of mechanics that, you know, either I have said that I like before, i.e. Southbound Soldier Gloves, or mechanics that we don't really care for, uh, being Zealot's Oath. Zealot's Oath was just not really that good in, for Shockwave Totem. But this new version creates a completely different way to play Shockwave Totem, and it's 100% viable. He's doing it right now. Before you jump into and think, oh, I'm going to play CI Shockwave Totem, one of the great things about the new unique Beast for Shawl is it's very inexpensive. Um, but one, you don't necessarily need Beast for Shawl. It just kind of makes your regen better, and it gives you AoE. 
doesn't give you as much AoE as Carcass Shack. It gives you half of what Carcass Shack does. But the regen is really what makes Beast for Shawl kind of like a big deal. Uh, I, in talking with Carve about this, you know, technically you could do this with a a rare, you know, 900 ES chess. That will give you more ES regeneration when it comes to your percentage base regeneration via Zealot's Oath, um, which might be better depending on what you're doing. It's completely preference, but the Beast for Shawl is just a very, very affordable, unique chess piece right now, and it it's just fantastic for what it is and it really opened up the avenue for ci shockwave totem more so than before because it's very it's very very affordable and this is something that i had said near the beginning of this like long ramble but elementalist does not appear that fantastic for shockwave totem even for this version because you're really not getting your full benefit from uh, pendulum of destruction. You're not getting the benefit from the 100% increase elemental damage every four seconds. You're getting the benefit from the AOE part of it, but not the elemental damage part of it. You're not necessarily getting the benefit, the full benefit from Legion of Primordial. You're getting double benefit from your Golem specifically, but you're not getting extra damage based off that Golem, right? Like you're not, you're not getting that. And then when it comes to um, you know, elemental conflicts is fantastic. That's great. Like no one, no one can deny that. But then when it comes to having an eighth ascendancy passive point, there's no really clear section to put it in. Uh, Paragon of Calamity is not, not really necessary because you're never going to be dealing with elemental reflect as Shockwave Totem because one, you don't deal with reflect when you're playing totems usually and one and two you're poison so you're physical and poison so that's kind of the downsides to it um the sensi passives while while they're so good that they work for it but you don't get the full benefit from it the way you do inquisitor or assassin or hero fan and then the other thing is transitioning or playing ci builds and you should do it. If you haven't played a CI build in Path of Exile, you should do it. It's a lot of fun. It's really cool to see, you know, your life completely covered with energy shield and having, you know, 12k energy shield. And you just, it, it feels, feels way tankier than it probably is. But it definitely is tankier than a life-based build for the most part. But they're a little difficult to pull off in the sense that you can't level as ci and you have to transition to it and transitioning into it takes practice and you're going to need more regrets than you count out you could go through your passive tree a thousand times and you're going to do something and you're going to mess up something and you're like oh shit well now i need five more regrets so transitioning from a you know leveling as you know level, leveling as a life-based shockwave totem to CI, there's going to be a little bit of difficulties and growing pains, especially if you haven't done that before. So, so yeah, the your leveling is going to be a little bit different. You have to be mindful of you know the fact that you're going CI. Your gear is going to be a little bit more expensive in the other slots. Thanks, phone. Your gear is going to be a little bit more expensive in the other slots. You know, besides like your chest and your gloves, because those are taken up by Southbound Soldier gloves and Beast for Shawl. But you're going to want a good ES helm, preferably 350 plus. You're going to want a good ES shield, preferably 350 plus. ES boots, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Good jewelry. Um, those things are just more expensive and it makes transitioning a little bit harder. And you kind of want to have a minimum amount of ES before you, trans before you transition to uh, CI. I would say that's probably around the 6K to 6,500 range. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing that hardcore, you could go a little bit further, but it's all practice. And the other issue is like, you no longer have Shatter. And ha having Shatter was such a big part of Shockwave Totem for a long time because it's great defensively and it's satisfying. Shattering a whole group of monsters is really, really satisfying. It's one of the most satisfying things in Path of Exile. So yeah. You no longer have shatter and then and then the other thing is like you know kind of the pseudo half benefit from your ascendancy passives and no good place to put it once you get your eight ascendancy passives so so there you go those are those are my thoughts on shockwave totem in patch 2.3 
Inquisitor, still good. Assassin, still good. Little change. Hierophant, uh, a new option. Let me know if you've played it. I think it sounds really fun dropping three totems and just moving from pack to pack to pack and not having to use a mana pot. Sounds really entertaining to me. Uh, but again, not as strong, not as offensively strong as Assassin or Inquisitor. And then the new one being the CI or the yeah, the CI Elementalist Poison Shockwave Totem. Uh, it's a real cool use of game mechanics. It's a combination of everything, and it creates for a pretty fun and uh, a tanky build, something that Shockwave Totem is always kind of lacked in. It's always kind of lacked in in, tank, in the tankiness department. You know, you've been very glass cannony, you know, between your ES and your life and your mana and just kind of sitting back in, and casting your shockwave totems and just hoping nothing hits you. But this gives you a, a considerably more room for error and just, you know, things like the lab and whatnot. So, yeah, guys, uh, let me know what you think of this video in the description below. I really appreciate it. I know I've been on kind of a hiatus just because my new job, again, a lot of fun, but it's keeping me really busy. So, yeah, thanks, guys. If you like this video, subscribe, share it like, you know, do all the things. All right. Have a good one. Good night. Bye.